Hello, everyone. Thank you for standing by. I'm Kathy Wells, editor of Construction Business Owner Magazine, and welcome to How to Improve Remote Workforce Communications by Eliminating Spreadsheets, presented by Carolyn McCauley, Rick Dowell, Shea O'Connor, and Construction Business Owner Magazine. Today's webinar is sponsored by Flowforma, and we'll share Morgan Construction's experience with empowering a remote workforce and streamlining processes through automation. Flowforma is a leader in process automation tools for Microsoft Office 365 and offers an innovative approach to developing products that empower users to create and streamline processes smarter and faster, utilizing the familiar SharePoint platform and without any coding. It's my pleasure at this time to introduce our speakers, Carolyn McCaughey, Rick Dowell, and Shay O'Connor. Uh, Carolyn McCaughey is Director of Corporate Services at Morgan Construction and Environmental Limited where she oversees all human capital aspects of the, of the business, including human resources, safety, corporate communications, administration, facilities, and information technology, or IT. Um, Rick Dowell is uh, president and co-founder of Pontum Innovations. Uh, he's a licensed professional engineer with a master of business administration uh, and a te technology commercial commercialization specialization. Uh, and has an extensive background in senior operational leadership roles and board governance. And last but not least, Shay O'Connor is head of solutions at Flowforma with more than 25 years of experience working in multi-sector con consulting and business development projects. O'Connor is a highly skilled professional in the IT industry. Welcome panelists, uh, happy to be here today and we look forward to hearing from each of you. So at this time, we will begin the webinar. Um, after the presentation, we'll kick off with the, the interactive Q&A session. Um, where we'll open the floor to your questions from the audience and uh, you may submit those questions via the chat or Q&A features at any time throughout the presentation. But now I will turn things over to Shay to get us started. Shay. Thank you, Kathy, uh, and welcome everybody today. Um, we're going to have a very interactive conversation today. I'm basically going to be chatting with those in the know. So those who have been through this whole process of the digitization. And in order to kick it off, Kathy, I would be great if you would throw up a poll as we put together and basically it's about voting on what are the organizational challenges that uh, are you're currently facing, obviously in line with our webinar today. And it would be great if people would just cast their vote or votes on this. So guys, um, usually these polls re reveal a lot in regards to um, for the leaning in uh, where companies are experiencing problems because it's, it's direct uh, information from different sectors, different areas. But as, as you can see here, and this would, I would see this as being so common, the highest uh, number here is embracing digital technologies. Um, Carolyn, would you concur with these findings? Absolutely, Shay. My goodness. It's so mm -hmm. scary change, right? And yeah. when we're all already total, so busy in our uh, current workforce and how we run things to actually embrace change and something we don't really know, maybe with an old school workforce, uh, it's, uh, it's probably quite a, quite a monster for people to consider. Yeah, I mean, I know Rick, you've you've come across this uh, with Pontem a lot because you're again at the cold face for organisations who are just looking at digital technology. And uh, digital te technologies is like it's two words that have an enormous impact. Uh, yeah. What have you found, Rick? Yeah, I agreed, and I, I think the the third item there around staying competitive is something everybody feels really strongly about and they know they want to do it. And then they say, how do I do it? How, how do we do this? Okay, we need to embrace digital technologies. Okay, but how do I how do I do that in a way that doesn't interfere with our normal day-to-day -day business? You know, how do we do that in a way that makes sure our clients are still happy? Uh, and I think that's an enormous challenge, right? And so yeah. um, finding, picking tools and, and looking at ways to do that in, a, in more of a phased approach that can, really make a difference for your business, I think is, is a key challenge. And, and one, the good news is there's different ways to do it. And I think there's ways that you can be successful with it, but all these things definitely start to tie together uh, as well. And, and I, you know, I would just interject that I think a roadblock is that the, the you know, 
especially in construction, we tend to want to run lean. We have to run lean. We have to be competitive in our bidding. Our pricing has to be spot on. And so then you add on a layer that's unknown around digitalization or technology. And you think, well, that's just going to cost me money that I don't have. I don't have room in the margin for that or room in the bid in my pricing. If it's lump sum or time and materials, doesn't matter. It's how you bid it. And, um, and I don't think we, and I'll speak, uh, I'm absolutely part of this group that, you know, embracing digital is sometimes a bit scary, but we don't always know what the ROI is going to be at the outset. But we know once we get through the change that the efficiencies will come uh, and yeah. the value, you know, the value will come and then you can, put the, you know, put that value back into the organization and continue to get work because you're leading edge now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, the big uh, word for me there is embracing. Mm-hmm. Because it, it's one thing, you know, uh, embarking on digital technologies, but it's to get everybody to embrace it. So to get everybody going, yeah, okay, I get it that we are doing this, but I'm behind you on it. So to get them to actually embrace it as a thing from just to do it is slightly different. So you kind of have to, you know, uh, bring in all the minds and get them all happy to go down this route. I'd say that's a tough one. Yeah, it is. Another one that's kind of interesting, and I don't know if everyone um, that's on this uh, webinar has the remote workforce, like similar to what we're dealing with, which is really up in the bush. It's it's where there is very little uh, internet or access to uh, towers, that sort of thing. And so the empowering remote workers through digital is interesting. And then you get Mm -hmm. into an oil and gas scenario in a mine uh, or, or whatnot. And they have rules around this that they don't even allow mobile devices at this time. It, it's, it's considered grounds for dismissal with cause. And so uh, that's an interesting, you know, when will industry catch up with the fact that contractors are trying to serve their, the primes or the owners uh, better and more efficiently, and we need to do that through technology. So what does that look like? Yeah, How do we reach yeah. our frontline workers who are, we're asking not to be distracted and be safe? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're just using this as a, an initial sort of a kickoff um, for the for the discussion. And say so these are the, are the challenges that that we sort of recognised as uh, being prevalent. Now, obviously, there are uh, a lot more, but these are just some some of the headings. But I wanted to pass over Rick to you because you are directly involved with Carolyn and with Morgan Constructions um, with their project. And yeah. going through all of these, I wouldn't say, not going to say pain points, but all of these scenarios and all of these issues and, and uh, categories of challenges that, you know, have to be met head on. Um, so we, we've put together a few questions just to sort of uh, keep the, the, that conversation, get that information. Yeah, there. yeah, for sure. And so maybe for some context too, I'll, uh, I'll just say Quantum Innovations, we're a Canadian partner for uh with full forma. And so we help with the integration and uh, application of, of process automation tools and, and analytics. So that's sort of our involvement around how do we make this, how, how do we make this happen uh, for Morgan? So I want to jump in and, and talk to Carolyn about, about her experience. And as somebody who started down that digital transformation journey and, and using process automation um, relatively early days, I think often in a lot of these conversations, it's talking to people who have been doing it for a year, a year and a half and saying, Hey, here's all the results. This is a little bit different. Is it? Is it Carolyn and, and her team and more in construction, or, or let's say two to three months in on this? So there's the the early um, wins, early pain points, early changes in in, in the culture and, and the approach around implementation are some of the key things we're going to talk about. So a little bit different perspective today, which I hope everybody on the webinar will find useful. So maybe as a, as a starting point, uh, I'll ask Carolyn just to tell us a little bit more about Morgan Construction. Yeah, happy to. So good to, to be here with everybody. Uh, so Morgan, we're a we're a Alberta-based privately held contractor. Uh, you know, we have uh, we it's ebbs and flows for sure, but uh, in terms of employee base, we can be 350 when COVID hits us and drop right down, and then we could spike up to 750 inside of a couple months. Um, so it just depends on the scope of work, what's been awarded, who we're looking to hire. We move dirt. That's basically what we do. Uh, so there's no bones about it. We absolutely move dirt. And so we have a ton of heavy equipment. So the big yellow iron uh, and of course, a lot of uh, light uh, fleet as well in our, uh, in our inventory. 
Uh, we are predominantly in oil and gas, uh, in mines and in the energy sector, but we also do infrastructure work, uh, environmental work, uh, demolition, reclamation, that sort of thing. Um, our leading value, of course, is that we are safe. We wouldn't be here at this, you know, playing at all in this space if we weren't uh, absolutely safe. And that's a big part of this whole digitalization is all the components that are required for safety and compliance. Uh, and, and our purpose is that we build trust. And so internally and externally, you'll hear me talking about that through, uh, well, I'm expecting through Rick's questions, uh, that yeah. usually plays into our decisions. Um, so we are in Western Canada, where we have work starting in Ontario, we are uh, exploring some work and partners in uh, south of the border in the States, which is really exciting. And so we're growing all the time and changing as is the industry. Perfect. And Carolyn, how long have you been with, uh, with Morgan? I've been uh, just just short of seven years now. Seven years, okay. And so, I've, what are have you, have you noticed any big changes even in those seven years, whether it's be in the industry or within Morgan, um, oh especially gosh. related to digitization or yeah. huge? Like we we were so old. We still are old school in a lot of ways, but um, we have taken so many steps to changing and kind of getting to another level. We. Um, we started flying drones in the last uh, five years where we'd survey land uh, that way and would help, uh, you know, kind of tighten up in terms of our uh, data points. Uh, we moved all of our tickets. So you think about all the compliance with safety tickets. We moved yeah. all that to like a, it's like a learning management system or portal. And um, it allows us to run training matrix and gap reports and all sorts of, but we were doing it manually. We were taking pictures and storing like snapshots of people's tickets and just storing them on emails and um, you know yeah. what else has changed so there's so much and also the economy dips and you know it ebbs and flows we're up and down we've seen our oil drop significantly in 2015 um, and that hit us hard uh, you know then we kind of climb out of that and we see a little bit of climb then the economy goes down politically uh, and now with the pandemic uh, so so many changes that we have to uh, uh, basically align to and just stay above water yeah, no, that's a great point. And how do you respond to those things? Because the expectation as a business is you have to be able to adapt and adapt quickly because yeah. your, your clients are expecting that. Great. Absolutely. So we'll move on to the next question, which is about what, what motivated Morgan Construction to digitize their processes? I'd like to hear a little bit more about sort of that, that motivation on your end. So I, I talked about our leading culture being that we are safe, but another one of our, um, our leading value, but one of our other values is that we always find a better way. And so at Morgan you know, we're pretty nimble when it comes to change. And we always, we say this in safety all the time that as soon as you think you've nailed it, that means you've become complacent. And so a big part of our business is saying, so now what's next? What can we do? How can we manage this better, stronger? And, and we always say to our team, which by the way, is very lean uh, on the support services and the overhead side is uh, work smarter, not harder. And so that was the, that was some of the impetus behind this is what are we missing? How do we improve? How do we work more efficiently? Um, and so I already talked about, you know, flying of the drones and, um, you know, we have GPS in our equipment, so we get all this data, but we're not doing anything with the data, but we were trying to be at leading edge. And so that's as over the years, like a bit of the evolution, we moved our servers to the cloud. So that got smarter for us that I was pleased with that move a few years ago. We started really leveraging OneDrive and saying, let's not send so many emails. Emails are, emails are yeah. being misused. Let's share documents and touch the data once. So let's not all save it and plug up, have more backup storage fees. And, but then it kind of begged the question, if everyone's looking at the same data, what is the value in the data that we're actually tracking? Like, and are we even tracking it? Um, so we started asking that and that's been a good evolution. Um, and so, you know, when you get to kind of the gap that we had is that we started to realize how many spreadsheets and how many things we're tracking, but we're not doing anything with. And we started having the conversation to say, you know, what's, what are we doing here? And how do we know we're performing? What are our KPIs? And so then I just want to bring you now to my backyard, which is my background's HR. Recruitment is a big part. People in this company don't necessarily recognize HR as the full definition as I'd like it. They see it as recruitment because that's the biggest pain point in our company. And so when we're hiring hundreds of people all the time, we need to be tight. And so, you know, we can't do it on a whiteboard anymore. We were doing it on a whiteboard, Rick. 
Yeah. We had felt and erasers, and we had we had only one person that was allowed to re replace a name if they dropped off. Can you imagine if we had hundreds? We can't. We don't have enough whiteboards. Yeah, and that, yeah, <laughs> and that's the, the scalability piece, right? Like, and we've been working with you for for two years now, and and I love that that your soul could always find a better way, right? Is because then it's not. It's like, hey, can we make things a little bit better, right? And if you do that every month, every week, it's like at the end of the year, wow, look at those changes we've made. And I think you guys really uh, epitomize that sort of culture and, and mentality. And so, yeah, I think this is a this was a, a great summary of sort of what you're trying to be and, and where you're trying to go from motivation. So uh, on the next question is sort of that indication around what it, what highlighted that it was time for more sophisticated process automation solution. And you highlighted the whiteboard, and and I know that there's spreadsheets involved in that. And <laughs> and we talk a lot about you know you collect all this data and and what for right and what is it that stakeholders really need. So wouldn't mind to hear a little bit more about um, what I'm, what indicated sorry, I, that. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, just Carolyn, just on what one thing you're saying there about the email, we always have a phrase that if your email becomes the source of the truth, you yeah. know you need to do something. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then and then talking about these darn spreadsheets. I mean, who invented Excel anyway? But uh, <laughs> you know, so we we took basically just to paint the picture, we took I they, our recruitment team was tracking hires on a whiteboard. And I said, this is crazy. Get it on the computer and share the file and everyone can work from the same file. Well, this file has become a beast. And so we actually call it our HR whiteboard as the Excel name of the file, which is so funny. We don't want to let go too much of the whiteboard concept. And the reason why we, you know, we started to look into a change and brought Pontum into our world as a trusted partner was because we have like 40 columns deep and hundreds of rows, uh, I guess, wide and deep. Uh, in terms of information, when we're onboarding our candidates, we have about 30 hoops they have to jump through. Yeah. Um, easily 12 to 15 hours of training, uh, you know, drug and alcohol testing, physical fitness testing. We need driver abstracts. They need to finish client protocol. There are so many steps. And in a really effectively, efficiently run business, all of these steps would be running concurrently. So our candidates have a good experience. They're, they're really not a new hire until they are compliant. And so we needed to, you know, basically extract everything on this whiteboard, which by the way, was a scary tool because if anybody deleted a row or deleted this live data, we lost the data because we had 14 users at any one time on this whiteboard. And so the solution kind of came, how do, we, how do we manage our performance, know what our risks are so we can proactively tell construction, tell the field, you know, we, we, we have a gap here. We have a risk or we have somebody who just got referred to a doctor. We don't know if they're gonna be cleared. We need to have a good way of reporting and we needed to also build trust with our stakeholders, with our customers and make sure that they saw that we had tight controls and how, how better to do that but have real-time data with really clean, tight reporting and have multiple people still doing concurrent follow-up and task assignment, but have it be an automated process. We're only touching it once. We had so much human error, oh my goodness. And yeah. so many different fingers in the in the pie, which is what we needed them to do. But uh, it just opens up risk that we didn't need. Our risk is that we have to get the human person, the human factor, to work, and yeah. that's out of our control largely. Uh, so tighten it up on our end is what we thought. Yeah, and a great example. I mean, how many different stakeholders would need to know at different points uh, within the company in terms of different departments, different groups of people that needed to know what the status was of the onboarding, right? In terms of, hey, do we have enough people applying for this job? And then, hey, when's this person getting to site? Like how many different stakeholders do you think oh would goodness. touch this? Yeah, so we're like our current? senior leadership team, every day our CEO is walking in my office saying, how many seats do we have? You know, how many yeah. seats are deficient? How many seats have we filled? How many offers went out? How many people dropped off? And, and I'm like, I don't know, just give me a second. And then I'm going onto the big Excel spreadsheet counting. <laughs> I could run a pivot, but those pivots would break because we'd add and change detail That's all right, the time. Change. Yeah. yeah, and so, and then we have all of our hiring managers, which are our foreman and superintendent. You have construction managers, which is really talking to the, the, um, uh, the owner. We have our engineers, our, our project managers who are ultimately accountable for the whole scope of the project. And so there's all different people hitting us at different times. And then you add in the candidates. They just want to get answers. They want to know what they're doing. They want to know who their person is. And if it's really streamlined and tight, what a great experience. Hopefully that gets them through the, the finish line. Exactly. And Shay, I'm curious if this is similar to other clients that Full Former works with in terms of this challenges and, and that 
back and forth yeah. and the number of stakeholders it's, that have to be engaged in, in it's funny well, yeah what Carlton was saying there and it's it really resonates is the the difference from a, even from a just even from a process point of view when you approach things sequentially versus parallel mm -hmm. so what i mean by that is you know you got a folder if you have a physical folder that you pass from one department to the next department so on people do their work in a sequential manner which takes a long time Whereas if you can do it in parallel, if everybody can work on their piece and everybody else has visibility of that piece, that was the big time, that is one of the big time savers that immediately would occur when you start digitizing. So um, you do have obviously your on-site scenarios where you have a lot of work from a process point of view going on. But as Carolyn said there, I mean, <laughs> If you don't have the people ready quick enough to get on site, you're, you're going to lose money. You know, I mean, you want to have those extra 50, 60, 70 people on site as fast as possible. And I don't mean rushed. I mean, as fast as you're meant to do it. So instead of it being, you know, that, that sequential thing, the parallel element yeah. does make a massive difference. Agreed. And I'll even say one thing that jumps out at me is that idea of, of visibility, right? And the trust around, oh, where are we at? Like people just want to know the status. I imagine how many times you pop into somebody's office or you send an email or a quick text saying, hey, are we in good shape? Are things still on track? And, and you're trying to, to just confirm that everything's in place because there's a lot on the go. And so I think that visibility yeah. into, hey, where are we in the process? Because a big difference when somebody says, hey, we're in process. Okay, well, are we at the beginning? Are we at step two? Are we at step nine? And all these people are about to, to head out to site. Uh, a big difference in terms of what you're going to be telling your client and operationally when you can hit the ground running. So I think yeah, it's a great you, point. If you calculate all that time spent, if you calculate yeah, all the huge. time spent asking those questions, you do get into some scary figures mm -hmm. when all of that information should be available. Yeah. yeah. So maybe let's let's jump in on on the next question around um, you know what did uh, what did Morgan Construction require when you're looking for a solution to some of these problems and, and that leads a little bit down the road of a process automation tool obviously but want to hear more about uh, what what you really valued and prioritized. So a big thing for us was just it needed to be straightforward. Yeah. Uh, you know, we also, uh, you know, right or wrong, I'm not proud of this, I, I guess I'll say, we do burn our uh, recruitment team pretty hot. You know, they, they have a lot of, it's all, it's like they're always under the pressure cooker. And so that will relate to, um, you know, turnover. If we don't manage things and make it as easy as possible for them, you know, we need to make sure that they feel supported and they have the right tools. So that was really important. Um, you know, with projects with it, and Morgan, we, we will get additional scopes of work at all times when we're on site because the owner recognizes the power of having equipment has already been mobilized. The costs have already been spent on that piece. So let's put the, that equipment, let's utilize it fully. And so we will have increased scope. We'll have reduced scope because of weather delays. We'll have change of people. And we wanted to be able to make changes ourselves as easily as possible and, and make sure we could manage the system. It's a little scary, you know, the whole Power BI and all the back end stuff that I don't quite understand yet. And so what, what we really wanted was something that was uh, relatively simple for us to manage from a maintenance perspective. Uh, you know, when we talked about building trust and transparency, we never used to do that. We used to, I used to have a former foreman in as my recruitment supervisor years ago. And he said, oh, I'm not telling them anything about who I'm hiring. Cause you know what they're going to do? They're all going to pick and choose and they're going to want that guy and they're going to hold on to so-and-so. So I'm not telling them a thing. I'm like, well, how are you going to build trust that way? <laughs> and so I, I opened up the, you know, the kimono, if you will, and said, let's, let's look, let's look at all of the details and have really good reporting. And so I, that was really important. Um, Okay, yeah. another big thing, Rick, is yeah. when you told me about Fl Flowforma. So when this is when we actually, I knew I had a, I needed this, and then we were talking about a solution, and it was around the fact that you actually have the chance to have a corporate license. Um, and I knew that I was the, I was moving faster than some of the other departments, but because I'm in IT and corporate services and part of the leadership team, I knew that other departments were have been talking about efficiencies and automation, but nobody was ready or comfortable or had the time or space to figure out what's the right solution. And so I love the idea that while, you know, HR kind of led the way, 
um, that this would spread its wings once we got it in as a corporate license. And, and then the cost could also be spread across, not that it's a huge cost at, by any means, but it's more about the hit to the bottom line. I don't want it to hit my group. I want to share the love and then oh, yeah. ROI will start to get sprinkled right through. So yeah, um, yeah, those are some of the, and of course, with our relationship with you, Rick, like for me, I don't trust easily and we don't use consultants very often or advisors or outsource. We try to do everything off the side of our desk and we only do, a, yeah. uh, you know, half a job. <laughs> and yeah. so in this case, you know, having a trusted partner in you that's local that helped me understand, hey, I think I have a solution for you that that really would work with your system, with Office 365, all of that. Uh, that was all very helpful for me. Yeah, for sure. And a great, like these requirements that you have, I think are, are a good fit. And the other one that you could even add in there is that real time information, right? Around yeah. status and people being able to know that quickly. And then the evolution, I'll highlight just the ability, I think around, hey, we need to tweak this because client X said, hey, we need this form now for all recruits. It's like, okay, well, that needs to be a, uh, something we're tracking. So immediately you can go in, make that change and uh, and it can happen in, you know, 10 minutes. And that that expectation of, of, evolving and changing your processes to meet client needs, I think is a, is a key piece. So, yeah. So maybe let's jump in just in our last, uh, you know, five to 10 minutes that we have talking uh, specifically about your experience. We want to hear more about sort of what, what's actually been digitized and then the, the piece related to, you know, what you've, what you've experienced during the initial um, days, weeks of implementation. <laughs> yeah, it's a long journey. It's, yeah, it's a yeah. good one. Uh, yeah. So what have we done? So, uh, so I've talked so much uh, about the HR onboarding, but this is that this was the, this is what kickstarted this whole uh, kind yeah. of movement. I'll call it a movement at Morgan. And, uh, and it's really kind of got people curious. And I, you know, we've been inviting people to the board, but the HR onboarding is just, it's just brilliant. And so, it, you know, that's in motion. And we'll talk more about maybe why it's not fully implemented. Um, uh, I think, you know, we can talk a little bit about the change process there, but um, HR onboarding is huge. Uh, the fleet maintenance tracking. So our equipment and maintenance, as well as our trucking and logistics groups have so many moving targets. Like you even just think about, uh, we, we at first just talked about simply tracking parts, parts management and repair requests. And getting that in a, because you have mechanics and, and which, by the way, largely are subcontractors in our space. They don't always have a Morgan email, but they do have an email and they're corresponding all the time with whoever from field is kind of saying, hey, we have equipment down unit number. And then a whole bunch of actions have to happen. Well, this is all happening, as you can imagine, on a mobile device with little, little emails getting sent uh, everywhere and error happens things get dropped parts get dropped so who's tracking this what's in what's still in process all of that good stuff uh, but even maintenance repair requests that's a big one and rick i know you're more involved than i am thank goodness yeah. uh, on that you can speak to that a little bit yeah absolutely yeah i think on, on the fleet side both sides of, of it there's a lot of assets are being moved around they're on sites and, and different requirements for different sites so how do you track all of that and the expense on maintenance and capital uh, around whether you're you're going to buy new piece of equipment, you're going to lease them, making decisions related to what your maintenance cost is versus capital and those trade offs. So you sort of have the high level strategic view of like, hey, what's our what's our trend been here with specific pieces of equipment versus the operational need of like, I need this this piece of equipment at this site at this time, and that's happening on a daily basis, you know, across 600 pieces of equipment. So. And, and the other thing I'll highlight on the processes here is that there's, you know, three different departments, really four different departments, because there's a couple of different groups within fleet. And so you have to have that balance. And this is always a challenge, I think, for every company is that balance of, hey, this feels like a Morgan process. We have consistency in the in the the formatting and the tool we're using. But when that person who's in finance or in fleet looks at the details, they're like, that's my department. That's my world. That's different than HR. That's different than, than finance. This is what I do. And so I think finding that balance is really important. And I think it, that starts to tie into the change management piece, which I think we want to jump into um, maybe a little bit further about what is the, the implementation and what have been some of the initial takeaways. I know we had a question here about culture and, and change management and getting people to adopt. So maybe if we can jump into the next question, uh, we can go there. So yeah, like I said, what's what's been your initial takeaways and, and definitely sounds like there's some interest around the culture piece and change management. 
So I, um, I tend to move a bit fast and my team tells me this all the time in my 360s, but I, I get an idea and then I, I wrap my head around it in my brain. I don't talk to anybody. And then I'm like, let's go. And the team is still back on what's this meeting about? <laughs> and, and so that adoption stage or the change management and gaining the buy-in uh, I know is so critical. And so we, you know, we've been living and breathing this shared Excel spreadsheet that's a beast and it's been working for the users from their perspective. It's what they know. It's how they were trained. A lot of them are pretty new. They've been with us for less than a year. We more than doubled our team during COVID uh, because we all of a sudden were busy. And so they only know one way. And so what I, what's been a little frustrating that I, I wasn't prepared for was the fact that I expected to flick the switch. I wanted my supervisor to just go start using the new tool. But how do you do that in the middle of projects? When is the right time uh, to drive that change? And, and then how do we get people on board so they're not getting so bumbled up on the change and the processes and the training and also keeping up with their day job, which is really quite busy. And so that one was a bit, bit tricky. Um, moving, you know, to the digital and just getting us to be smarter with our data and how we, you know, how, how we touch things, touch them only once is what we keep talking about. That's been really good. It's actually, I think that the, the ones that are bought in recognize the value and we'll continue to see that throughout the organization uh, for sure. I would say that on the reporting front, we get really bogged down right now. We don't make it easy on ourselves from an administrative standpoint. Oh my goodness. Like we, and our stakeholders want reporting all the time and it takes us actually more time than it should because we actually should be filling seats, not worry about reporting. And so this is already loosening that up where we're able to have um, uh, quicker and just more automated reporting, um, which is really effective from a customer service perspective. Um, and I, I guess an, another big thing for me is thinking about scalability. And we've, I think I'm probably repeating myself from the beginning of, the, um, of today, but we have to be ready to continue to grow and we need to work smarter. And so I feel like this, you know, overhead's always an issue. What's our percentage of overhead? How lean are we? And so, and optically, I want to run a really tight team that is performing high, high performance standards. And I believe that this is um, already um, kind of reaping those rewards. And I also like that we're leaders in this. So that's another little. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that, that question from my perspective and what we've seen around adopting new, new tools and that transformation, like taking a phased approach is important, right? And then also really highlighting the areas that, where there are the largest time challenges and, and things of that nature, right? Because there's not too many people in organizations that are like, you know what, I just have a lot of time on my hands, you know, there's nothing but time here. So, you know, no worries, we don't need to improve. So if you can start to make somebody's life easier and give them some time back to do, do tasks that aren't manual and repetitive, that, that maybe can be automated, that changes a, a lot of things in the organization over, over a time frame of, let's say, six months. And Shay, I don't know if there's anything you want to add there before we sort of jump into the next question. No, no, I'm happy. I mean, Everything I think I feel is being covered. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So, um, we'll go on to the to the next one, and maybe I'll just say, Carolyn, for as as we go on, we're on what's next for the agenda. Like we're sort of two to three months in, right, in terms of the journey, and, and you guys using it, and, and we're at different levels of adoption. So, I want to get a sense of what's next on the agenda, and and even some of the feedback you're hearing from from your team about what's working, what they're excited about, or or even what they're maybe scared about or concerned about right because it's, it's always both both sides from a change perspective yeah no for sure yeah the change piece is so I, I see that there is that question in the chat and and you know um, managing change is 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 a it, that could be weeks and weeks of training for us but it's just recognizing where someone is in that cycle of are they grieving are they angry are they confused you know do they understand the why and grounding it um, with you know just the business need or the gap that it's filling? Uh, is it making us safer? Is it helping us uh, retain people? Is it, is it creating a more service centric uh, model? You know, whatever might, might be important to your organization from a values perspective or a mission or vision, I think it's really important to tie it back to that. Um, but I do think we always think we communicate so well as if we do, we need to communicate over communicate and communicate again and in different ways. And so, um, you know, those would all be big ones for, for us at, here at Morgan, for sure, in driving the change. What's happening now, which is kind of a collision of 
our curiosity for digitalization, like we are, we have been transforming our safety forms all to e-forms or digital forms. And then of course we can mine that data and have real time data capture in terms of safety trends, leading indicators, knowing when we had a high potential near miss, making sure that if it's, if it's that high potential, that there could have been an incident that we're actually doing something that day. What, what were the hazards that we should have mitigated, eliminated, what, what filters were, uh, had gaps in them uh, in terms of management systems or environmental conditions or human factor. And so this data capture has become a beast because everyone wants to chomp at it. Everyone in the organization is saying, I want this digital, I want this digital. And we have to get ahead of, so what do we do with the data um, so that we're, you know, we're building capacity in the organization, not getting bogged down with more digital stuff. And people think, you know, we should know all the answers right out of the gate. So how do we do that? We automate. So we've been trying to look at with Power BI, with Flowforma, uh, you know, how do we pull that and actually build a teller story? And that'll create those digital dashboards for the company, put them up on our intranet, our SharePoint. And then the other big thing that's really on our radar is um, building our own apps. So thinking about sure. this digital, yeah, this digital yeah. space and saying, how do we reach the frontline worker? Um, how do we, you know, what apps do we need to, you know, build a robot? How do we build a robot that helps us manage candidate inflow or whatever it might be? And so that's kind of an interesting one that I'm not quite sure on yet. <laughs> it seems pretty nebulous. Yeah. Um, but, and then when it comes to Flowforma, the other thing, something as simple as when we get a new job. So when we get work awarded, we've just realized in our company that our naming conventions are all out of whack. So depending on if it's in our enterprise risk management system, safety, HR, you know, payroll, accounts receivable, accounts payable, whatever it might be, we might have a job name that we've created that's been a bad habit, but it might not be the overarching common name. And so that's another answer that I think, Rick, we're going to come to you in the near term here is drive a flow forma process on just when we get a new job and yeah. it, it pushes it to everybody and says boom we just got a new award and then everyone has the common language we know all the details of the job and everyone can set up their systems accordingly yeah and i think that that going back to the the theme that morgan around always find a better way right and with flow forma like all these things that come up you know now that that structure is there it's like okay we can spend what three five hours and like, hey let's build a form here and, and you have that taken care of and uh, I think that's an exciting piece and I know from a change management perspective and talking with the fleet team I know they're very excited about the future because they recognize the challenges of of emailing spreadsheets back and forth and so it's uh, yeah it's pretty exciting to to be at the beginning of this as well because you think about where where Morgan will be six months from now, 18 months from now, and, uh, and definitely I think huge opportunity for you guys to continue to be a leader. So I um, want to thank you, Carolyn, for sharing your story. This is really helpful and, and appreciative. So uh, at this point, I think we'll turn it over to Shay because he'll talk a little bit more about Flowforma, um, but maybe I'll just ask if there's any last word on, on sort of Morgan's experience that you want to say, Carolyn or, or Shay, if either you guys want to jump in with a final comment. I, I would just encourage if, if you're on this call because you're looking at how to innovate and how to drive efficiencies, I, I would be curious and continue to chase that and, uh, and discover um, how simple it can be. It seems daunting, I think, when you're yeah. taking a process and, and it's like, well, I don't have the time to tell somebody else about the processes and create the workflow, but there's help out there. And, and then once it's, uh, once it's actually working, it's quite a well-oiled machine. And I know there's some questions in the Q&A, so I'll try to address those if I can. Thank yeah, you. and just following up on, on that, Carolyn, I always reckon with, with organizations, the reality of it is, is do they see themselves being totally manual in five years' time? And they would all say, no, you know, we will. Of course, we're going to digitize. We're going, But you have to start somewhere. And the fact of the matter is that you can start nicely and simply and easily and get stuck into it. But you do have to start sometime. And it's um, it's it's good that the infrastructure is there. You know, with the likes of the, the Office 365 environments, you have the infrastructure there and you can just add on to it. You know, like with Flowforma in our case, but invariably there's so much more availability of um, tools to help you digitize and uh, more readily available than they used to be. So that's certainly um, Shay, one of the questions from one of the panelists was, uh, are there processes that would actually remain undigitized based on, um, you know, my experience or our experience in construction and, you know, maybe it's too difficult due to change or due to cost. And, you know, 
I'm trying to think just off the cuff what wouldn't be on digital. The one issue that we have, which is a bit of a roadblock, is around safety compliance, and uh, and the fact that we're we're trying to drive safety on our work sites and they're not allowed to fully use mobile apps uh, because yeah. they're not supposed to have devices. And so that's a massive gap. This is happening with Suncor, Syncrude, Husky, Imperial, well, not Imperial, but there's a bunch of them that are saying there's it's no cell phone zone. And yeah. so it's really limited us because we want to move. Like we want to go paperless. Mm. Yeah. Paper, paper-based safety stats, report cards on hazards written down in someone's a piece of equipment isn't going to help us be safer because there's going to be a delay and others may have the same hazard and all it takes is one hazard for a major incident. And so that would be my biggest roadblock right now. And it's actually around having industry catch up with how wonderful we are as contractors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I mean, I mean, but in our case, there's a, a mobile app that you can work offline, but obviously you can't have the device there. So, but it's going to have to be, something's going to be filled in at some stage. Yep. And the reality is, you should it should be filled in digitally. It has to be filled in because otherwise, you're not going to be able to gather that beautiful data you're looking for. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'll give one quick example because I do think there are some scenarios. Um, is it you know on the safety side if somebody's on a rooftop and it's minus 25 outside you know it might not be realistic that they're going to be on their phone or or you're going to pay for everybody to have a tablet and type it in they just want to be able to write something quick or write it in their truck after and maybe somebody's visiting a site and you need five people to sign something that's maybe easier just to do on a piece of paper uh, especially since the cost of getting a tablet in every single guy's hands maybe might not be worth it, or maybe you have to train them on it. But the key piece is once you have that paper from there to Shay's point, it needs to get in digitally one time and that's it, right? This idea that, oh, we're going to track this piece of paper and then we're going to deal with it later. So I do think at the field level, sometimes it might be easier to do pen and paper, but then when it comes back for tracking purposes, that process should be really tight about it's going into one spot. And from there, we're tracking everything we need out of it. So that'd be the one thing I'd say. And structured data is really important, which is yeah. one of the things Flowforma brings. Um, but even for using optical character recognition, having consistent forms that maybe can be scanned is a, is a good way to think about it as opposed to just letting somebody write on a blank piece of paper about who was on site. It's like that, that and, might and not hopefully be. Hopefully there's the exception. I mean, hopefully that's the exception as well. I mean, we have organizations yeah. who say, yeah, they want to get paperless, but they're going to start at paper light. That's so right. They're, they're, yeah, exactly. get to that point. And then hopefully, you know, we might get to a place where it's paper is fantastic. But if you got to paper light, I think everybody would be a lot happier. Yeah, a hybrid approach for yes. a while. That's change. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Thank you so much, you guys. Yeah. Thank no, you, Carol. Carol. That's great. Just... Um, yeah, so just from a background point of view, um, I'm not going to keep you uh, any length of time and, and just sort of conning on some, on some of the information we, you've gathered so far from talking with Carolyn and Rick. Uh, as Carolyn has saying that they've, they invest in the Office 365 infrastructure, Flowformer is an app that sits there. I mean, we're a Go Microsoft partner, so we know what goes on in the background and we've created this app that allows you to make use of your existing infrastructure with Office 365. So the nice thing is all your data sits in your tenancy. It resides in your SharePoint environment. We just use it as a data repository, but it's always, we don't have any data, it's always yours. So, I mean, I, I'm not gonna harp on a few things on, on this, I just skipped through, but the reality is organizations want to do different things uh, with digitization. Some want to pass it on to their IT department. Others, and in our case, they want to actually empower the organization. So they want to get to a paperless uh, scenario, but keep that going. So you have to have something that's going to spread, and we've used the word scalable, um, but can we start at a, a low cost entry level? And also, I don't want any surprises. So, it, in construction, margin is the king. So you have to maintain that margin. And we have set it up that you don't get charged on consumption. It's just a flat rate. You get in, you get in early, low startup cost, and um, you can get your own team up to speed so that you're creating your own processes, maintain your own processes after you've been shown how to do it. Um, 
as a result of that, you get to a point where you, you start getting closer to the paperless area from your paper light. We do have a construction accelerator. Now, the reason that this was brought in is because people find it very daunting to adopt a brand new platform where you have to create processes. Now, everybody's processes are different, but we do have a batch of processes that you can see there that uh, come as templates with our environment and they just come as standard. We have a lot of features within Flowforma, the likes of uh, the ability to take photographs on the mobile app, but also to annotate those, those photographs. So you can pinpoint certain um, items on, on a photograph from your mobile app, which comes as standard with Flowforma. You also have location services. So you can see where somebody is, they can pinpoint areas, they can actually be fully integrated with the likes of Google so that you can pinpoint certain things. Again, our focus is on making the life of the construction worker, the construction supervisor, manager, et cetera, and then all the way up, making their life easier. Um, we are always keen to put in innovations as well that support that whole vertical of construction. Um, now, what I want to do, uh, I'm literally going to, this is going to take only a few minutes because I know that we are tight for time. So I'm going to show you, you've heard about the environment. But I might as well show you what uh, it's all about, give you an idea at least. So what we have here is a sort of a standard landing page of our construction accelerators. And they are just links. So when you create a process in Flowform, you can actually distribute it wherever you like. The nice thing is when you create it, it's also automatically rendered for the mobile app. So straight away, it's ready. And again, here is just uh, an example of some of our processes. To look at labor requisition, for example, if I click on that, um, you'll notice here across the top, and this is really important, is a step bar. Now, this is going to give you a visual on the steps that are in the process. The reality is a lot of the people who are going to be using digital process for the first time, won't know what is involved in the process in a lot of cases. So here you get a, an idea that we're on the first step of a five step process. Now that can change depending on what information you put in. But you will go through, put in your information at your step, submit, and it knows where to go for the second step, third, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just gonna close this and again, pop into say materials requisition process. So again, it, it, you know exactly what it means here is the materials requisition, but you'll notice the familiar look and feel. All of these forms have been automatically rendered. So you don't have to create these forms. You literally supply information in the background and it gets automatically rendered for you. Again, I'm just going to close this. And what I'm going to do is say with the uh, yeah, the labor requisition. I'm going to pop into the background of that very, very quickly. And I'm going to make one little change just to give you an idea. But if I go into labor requisition, and this is all about the agility of um, an environment where you can make changes fast and you're, uh, you can do it yourself. So if, I'm going, I, if I add a new step to this process, I'm just call it my new step. I'll just click save. I'm going to drag it to the top. I'm going to take a quick peek. So I'm going to take a quick peek about how, how that would look. So now we've got a my new step within the process. Great. So I know I'm on the right track. I'm literally going to add in one or two pieces of information. So where are you? I'm going to pick up my location. So I'm going to pick up uh, I'm going to show a map, get the location by default. I'm not going to go for altitude. Um, and I'll put in something else. Have you all details? I'll make that a yes, no. I'll save that. And I'll put in one more. 
verify. And I'm going to make that a signature. So another nice simple feature here is that how you can gather signatures on touch screens. I'm going to make this invisible. I'm going to put a little ruler here that's going to show this. Now, this is as literally as far as I'm going to go. So hide show sign. I'm going to put in my conditions. The only reason I'm showing you this is just to show that there's no code involved whatsoever. Have your off all details. I'm going to say if that equals yes. Simple enough. I'm going to have a simple action. The verify, I'm going to show it. I could do more things, but I'm not going to do it. Just going to do one simple thing. I'm going to save that. Now, if I pop in and take a peek at what my process is going to look like now, it's going to tell me where I am. As you can see, I'm in Dublin at the moment. That's actually sunny here today. Have you all details? If I say yes, the form, the screen will dynamically change. And I can add in my signature. Now, that's a step gone into, as you can imagine, if you needed to make alterations based upon feedback from business users, from end users from anybody involved in the process. You can make them that quickly. You can turn it around that fast. And even from a confirmation of, are we in the right space here? Does that look right to you? The fact that you can get that feedback going on is very, very important. And um, what I'm gonna do is stop share. So Ursula, if you'd like to put up the, Okay, so we are asked continuously about organization and from organizations who literally want to embrace digital transformation. They want to embrace the whole thing and they do not know where to start. The reality is no matter what you're doing, you're going to have to have a sponsor. So you're going to have to have somebody are some people who are going to drive this within the organization. You need support in it because you will get pushback. There's no two ways about it. You're going to get pushback because adoption is key here. You're going from one way of operating to another way. And the one way of operating that you're in has been there for years. And now you're going to change that way. Okay. The, the way to do it is get a process that people are used to. So something that they are familiar with. It's an obvious process, we call it. So get that one. And you start by digitizing that. But the quick to react is so important. And it's for two reasons. One, you get a better process because as you try out a new process, you then get feedback saying, well, you know, if I had it my way, I would actually change this or include this information for this reason. If you feel that's acceptable, like the changes I just showed you there, you can make that change and you get buy-in straight away from the people, from the business users, et cetera. So, you can imagine somebody comes to you and said, that process is great, but I need a new step and I need to be able to include a signature, et cetera. And you turn around and say, yeah, it's there for you now, the following day, the following morning, two hours later, an hour later, whatever. You get not only a better process, but you also get full engagement from those business users because they have, they're going to have to have some control, obviously, but you get buy-in. It's an ownership thing. So they feel part of this now. It, it's not a mystery to, mystery to them anymore. They know that what they are suggesting is being listened to. As a result, after that, you're talking about just making sure that you get regular feedback. Then the fact that you can actually make adjustments quite quickly, you, you need to engage. We would have, in most organizations, we would have, it could be a team of people who are involved in process, as in what are the best things to do here? And finally, I mean, the simplest thing of all, get a trial. Try it out for yourself. Thanks, Kathy. Okay. Um, thank you guys, everyone, for your presentation and the amazing uh, insights you've shared with us. Uh, we've had a few questions come through the chat, and we've got a few minutes left, so I'd like to go ahead and begin the Q&A session. Um, speakers, if you're ready, we'll just dive right in and throw these out to you and attendees. Um, feel free to keep your questions coming. If we can't answer them within our time here today, we'll make sure to get those answers to you soon. 
Um, all right, Shay, since we're still in the heels of your, your demonstration there, um, we have a question uh, asking, do you have dashboards for each of the construction process accelerators where you can see all of the responses in one place? Yeah, so uh, invariably we do have dashboards, and but also you have uh, the facility of uh, using Power BI. So we, you have all of the, of the data, because some people like to see things differently. You can have standard dashboards, no problem, but all of the data is also available that if you would like to use Power BI and become a bit more advanced, do that. I mean, a lot of the police guys do that. They start off simple, but then evolve and become a bit more sophisticated. Absolutely, and and I'll say as, as somebody who Quantum does dashboards as well, is that that structured data makes it easy to to create more interactive reporting for sure. And as an organization, you can just you can provide different views to different stakeholders, so they're just seeing the things that, that they want to see with the base data. So definitely a, a huge improvement over trying to grab information from a whole bunch of different systems off somebody's desktop, wherever it might be. Right, that structured uh, formatting makes a dashboards much easier. Sure, uh, Carolyn. Anything to add? No, Power BI is a beast, but I'm. It, we have gotten so curious as an organization that you're right, Shay and Rick. It's just created more curiosity, and so now I, I've just recently hired a data analyst uh, in house, which is a huge step for us. And so he's just a new graduate um, from computer engineering, and he's like, he's so busy. He's like, Carolyn, you guys have so many projects. What did you do before me, I came along? I'm like, well, we didn't do anything. <laughs> that was the problem. <laughs> Yeah, and a good example, I think that data analyst just on the Flowforma side is he's learning how to use um, Flowforma. So now they'll have in-house capability to be able to, to build processes and, and help, you know, more get even further faster, right? And that's one of the benefits, um, for sure, of no code and it all starts to tie together nicely. Great. Well, yeah, thank you for your responses there. Um, and we'll, we're going to move fast, so, so throwing yeah. it back at you. Um, I think a question that maybe everyone is thinking is how do I begin? How do I pick the first process to automate? How do I decide which, which uh, process to prioritize? Yeah. Yeah, I might chime in there. Basically it's, um, it is usually the obvious one. So it's, and I know that's well, what is obvious, but it's something that a lot of people will interact with, but something also that was, is within a size that you can demonstrate it as a digital process quite easily. And Rick, would you feel the same? I, I mean, you yes. might've come across different things, but that's what yeah. we would normally push towards. Yeah, I'm, I'm in full agreement. I think something that's a, a mid-size, it touches a lot of people and you know, takes up a lot of time. And, and there's a lot of back and forth in terms of conversations or emails and it's in spreadsheets and, and it's problematic. That would be a, a great place to start. And, and an area where you have a champion, somebody who's like, I want to do, make things better. Yeah. I want to improve. If you have that combination, that's a great place to go. Yeah. Who shares the loudest? <laughs> <laughs> and who's willing to make, you know, do put in the, and commit, you know, to it. Yeah. commit to making the change and be like, yeah, we're going to do this because our team's ready. Yeah. Well, yeah. And since we're, since we're on the topic of, of uh, champions, if you will, uh, any tips for user adoption and bringing the team on board? It is that scenario of involving people quite early. So the great thing about having a tool that doesn't require coding is that you can show progress quite quickly. So you can say, hey guys, here's an initial draft of what we were thinking of doing. So you engage them and how do you feel about this? And then you get the reaction and you can actually make changes quite straightforwardly and quickly. Uh, the guys in Pontem have this down to a fine art for base. It, it, it is that interactive session where changes can be made on the fly. It makes a big difference. And it does get user engagement and buy-in. And I would recommend uh, uh, thinking about who you would handpick that might actually be the person that could derail it quickly. So who, who is Very scared nice. of technology? Who's scared of... Uh, they don't think it's going to work. Well, guess what? You're going to be the project lead. Make it work. Brilliant. And uh, and so my you know my recruitment supervisor, she's scared of technology, and now she's a pro. She she's been tweaking it. She 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 knows what she wants. She's confident, so now she can lead her team effectively. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, well, one thing I would say is definitely frequent check-ins for a shorter duration. I think it's sometimes it's hard for people to you know visualize it without seeing it so let's show them let's not sometimes people go away on it projects they're like i'll wait till the end Ta-da! here it is and you're like whoa okay you know i waited six weeks and now i want some changes so meet every week for those 
four weeks or six weeks and get their feedback because it's good. Then when it goes live, it's not a big event because they were along for the ride. So they're like, great, we're going to start using this. We already know it works. It's using the language I want and away they go. And I, I think that's a, a really good approach from change management. Yeah. Because everybody's been bit by some IT project that went over budget and over timelines. And Carolyn can talk. I think that's something that doesn't happen in this case, right? Is we we set our budgets, we set our timelines and we hit them because the, to, the tool works well. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Um, unfortunately, that does it for our time today, which brings our webinar to a close. Um, we'd like to thank our presenters for the great information they've shared with us. And thank you for your questions, everyone. Uh, thanks again to our sponsor, Flowforma, and our speakers, Carolyn, Rick, and Shay, for sharing their expert advice. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join us. I hope you all have a great afternoon. Thank, thank you. you, Kathy. Bye. Bye.